Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about adventure motorcycle chain maintenance. If you ha don't have a chain, you have a shaft drive like a BMW, uh, R1200, 1250, or a Super Tenere, you can go ahead and just get off this video now. This does not apply to you. But for all you others who have a chain drive like this Honda Africa Twin or many of the other adventure bikes out there that are chain drive, this will apply to you. So let's go ahead and get into it. Hey guys, so I've had a lot of questions lately on how you can support this channel. So what I've done is I've created a Teespring page where you can purchase sweatshirts, t-shirts, even coffee mugs with the BAM logo on it. And all the money made from this page will go directly back into the channel to help improve the videos. Also, I went in and I made a PayPal link where you can also make donations to this page. And again, everything from there will go directly back into this channel. If you choose to make a donation or buy any swag, it's greatly appreciated. And thank you guys for watching. We'll be talking about how to clean your chain and how to adjust your chain properly for your next ride. I have a ride coming up on Friday, which technically I'm gone on right now while this video is being released. And because of that, I wanted to make sure and check my chain. Uh, the book for the Honda man from the Honda manual says you should check it every 600 miles or whatever that converts to to kilometers. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start doing that now. It's been about that, maybe a little bit more since I checked it. So it definitely needs to be checked. I do have a brand new chain and a brand new sprocket from my last ride that I did. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad as far as where it goes, but to, to help maintain the chain and get the longest life out of it, you definitely want to clean it as often as you, as you can. So the first thing you wanna do with any motorcycle chain, whether it be a standard chain or an X-ring chain like this or an O-ring chain, is you want to inspect the chain and make sure that there's no damage to the chain. There's things that might happen to it like kink to links or if a rock hits it or anything like that, that could, that could cause some damage to the chain. Something you may not notice when you're riding, but it's nice to just spin the wheel around and get a good inspection. This is a camera to give you a closer look. It's kind of in the way, but I have to deal with it. So you have to deal with it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we'll just spin Spin the uh, tire and we'll look for any kind of abnormal wear or any damage to the chain. This one does have a, a master link that's not a clip-on style, it's the rivet style. You'll notice that here. So after spinning this chain all the way around, it looks like it's in good shape. So let's talk about the differences between a standard chain, an O-ring chain, and an X-ring chain, or any other letter they add to a chain nowadays. So a standard chain is kind of what you find on your old school dirt bikes. It's uh, just basically you have an outer link, an inner link, and those two mating surfaces meet together continuously throughout the chain to create your chain links. Uh, there's nothing that keeps the grease or the oil inside the chain um, when, you, when you oil it. So those chains need to be maintained regularly. Also at higher speeds, they can wear out quicker. Now an O-ring chain or an X-ring chain. So I happen to have a link for a O-ring chain here and you'll see between the mating surfaces, there will be an O-ring. And what that does is it allows the grease to stay inside the lubricating surface and it allows the chain to last longer and hold that grease in. Not only does it allow to hold the grease in, but it also keeps dirt and grime and anything else, water from getting in between uh, the links, inside the links where the shaft goes through and wearing it out quicker. We all know that whenever you get uh, sand or anything against two metal, metal surfaces and you go over and over and over again, eventually it, were, it will wear that metal out. The only difference between an O-ring chain and an X-ring chain is that on this O-ring, you can see that it's it's smooth. It's just like basically a, a rubber band all the way around. What an X-ring is, is it has, if you look at the rings sideways, I wish I had one to show you, but an O-ring chain, again, it's smooth all the way around if this will focus. An X-ring will basically have an inner ring and an outer ring or a little rib all along the outside there. And supposedly that helps keep you know, the grease and everything in even better than what an O-ring is. So when it comes to the O-rings versus X-rings, it's kind of like choosing tires and oil. One guy will say one thing and somebody else will say another. Um, at higher speeds, personally, I prefer an X-ring chain because it's just the physics of it. It all makes sense that an X-ring is going to hold in because you essentially have two gasket surfaces instead of just one. Again, that's just my opinion. 
yeah, we'll leave it at that. So we talked about chains, let's, let's talk about sprockets. So this is a fairly new sprocket. It's got about five, 6,000 miles on it. And you can see that the anodizing is worn off, but as far as the edges, they are in still really good shape. Um, if you look on top here, it's flat, which is a good thing. So uh, when the sprockets come from the factory, they usually have a nice valley here and they come up to like a plateau and then a nice valley. And you'll notice over time as the motorcycle turning this tire, it pulls on this edge of this side right here. And you'll notice on a, on a chain or a sprocket that gets start, starting to get worn out, this will start to be almost like a shark tooth effect. It'll be very narrow here and then kind of go onto your bowl and then this will be virtually unworn. So lots of acceleration, lots of hard riding, you'll, get a, you'll start to get wear on this side. Now on the flip side of that, if you do a lot of deceleration like um, engine braking or a lot of downhill, you'll get some wear on this side. So um, a really a nice, even wear, worn sprocket, you'll have uh, a lot of wear here and a lot of wear here and to where this flat side's almost gone and creates a really sharp point. I've seen some, especially on some dirt bikes who have a lot of wear that this is so sharp that it can dang near cut you. But the most common, especially on these bigger bikes, is that you'll get a lot of a lot of you guys like to just really romp on the throttle, you know. So you'll get a lot of wear here, creating almost this like shark fin or shark tooth effect, uh, where it looks a lot like a shark ten, shark fin or a shark tooth. So take a look at your sprockets. Make sure that they're wearing evenly, and that. Uh, you don't have one side wearing quicker than the other. Um, and then again, if you start to lose this plateau on top and it starts to turn into a point, it might be time to start looking at your chain and sprocket to be replaced. Uh, you always wanna replace your chain the same time you re replace your sprocket, no matter what, because if you put a brand new chain on a worn out sprocket, it's just gonna wear out that chain faster and vice versa. If you put um, brand new sprockets on a worn out chain, that worn out chain will tear up your sprockets pretty quick. So again, that's just a little bit of uh, maintenance there. That's something to look for whenever you're inspecting your, your chain and your sprockets before you do your uh, adjustments. So, let me get this out of the way. If you know my videos, my, my gear and beers, my gear and beer Thursdays, I usually drink, um, I usually drink IPAs. But I happen to have some Blue Moon here and it just tastes good. Okay, so when it comes to cleaning a chain, you don't really, it doesn't, no tools are really required. But one thing nice to have is this nylon brush. You can use a regular toothbrush style nylon brush. What I like about this one is it has this U shape to where you clean essentially three sides of the chain all at once. So basically it goes on like this, you spin the tire and you can clean the, out, the two outers and the bottom all at one time. But before we do that, we have to, get all the dirt and the grime and everything off of the chain. Now, the Honda manual says not to use gasoline or any kind of heavy abrasives, or um, what they recommend is their, of course, their Honda chain cleaner. Um, the chain manufacturer, and if you look at a lot of the chain manufacturers, they'll say this as well, kerosene is one of the best things you can do to clean a chain, and it's super cheap. You can buy the gallon of it for like five bucks. So that being said, I just bought a, got a plastic bottle. I put kerosene in it. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna soak this chain down really good. This one isn't super dirty, because like I said, it's a fairly new chain, but we're gonna soak it down and then we're gonna wipe all the grime off. We'll scrub it with the scrub brush, wipe it all down and get it nice and clean. And then we'll move into the adjustment. One thing you definitely wanna do is lay down some towels, whether it be shop rags, the blue paper towels, I have a lot of these uh, white rags. My wife and I own a yoga studio and these say, just breathe. But they ended up not printing them straight. See the big giant gap at the top and not at the bottom. So we have about 500 of these that now I use for shop rags. A little, bit of little tidbit there. So yeah, now we're just gonna soak this chain down. Spinning the tire, soaking it all down. And you can see as I start to go around here, a lot of the black is starting to drip off. 
There we go. Now we're cooking. Kerosene is really nice because, again, it's not super abrasive. It does break down all the, the oil and the grime and everything that's on the chain. All right, now that we got that good and soaked, we'll take our brush, we'll hook it on, and then we'll just go back and forth. Yeah. Okay, I'll be there in a minute. Going back and forth, cleaning the chain. Make sure and take it the other way on top. Making sure to keep your fingers out of the way of any sprockets or anything like that. Once you got it nice and scrubbed, rinse it off again with some kerosene. Get all that dirt and grime flushed out of there. The last thing you want to do, you can look at this now. This chain is night and day difference than what it was. It was nice and it was all black. Now it's all nice and shiny. We're going to take our rag and just really wipe it off. Trying to get all the kerosene out of there because you want your lubricant to stick. And if you're, look at all that. If your uh, kerosene's still in there, it's not going to allow the the lubricant to stick. You can see that you get it all over your tire. Again, this is not a very clean process. It's not gonna hurt the tire or your brakes or anything like that if you get it on, on any of that. You really, it shouldn't get on your brakes, honestly. It's pretty far on the other side for that to happen. But you wanna wipe everything down, again, Wiping the chain down, get all the grime off. Now we have ourselves a pretty clean chain. Like I said, it's all nice and shiny. It's not black anymore. There are a few little spots I could go through on the outside, but that's just on the surface. I'm confident that everything in between is nice and cleaned out. And if you look at this rag, you can tell all the grease and grime that we got out of there. So now I'm gonna just finish wiping everything down and then we'll get into the adjustment part. Okay, so we got our area all cleaned off. I've raised the bike up and put it on its side stand. It's recommended you do any kind of chain adjustment with some weight on the back tire so the swing arm is compressed and that way you get an accurate measurement. Now the Honda manual suggests this. I'm sure most of your adventure bike manuals are going to suggest the same thing. I've never seen one that said to do it on the center stand, mainly because the swing arm drops down, creates more slack in the chain versus when it's this way you have correct tension on the chain. So yeah, let's get into it. Um, so there's a few tools that you need for this procedure. Um, 
you need or for this specific bike you need a 22 and a 27 millimeter wrench to loosen up the back nuts on or the axle nut on the rear you also need a 10 and a 12 millimeter to a, for your adjuster you need a measuring tape to be able to measure your slack there's also a couple other tools that i really like this motion pro slack setter there we go it's uh really useful for checking your slack easier than a measuring tape and also for setting your tension this chain monkey I'm trying to focus on my face not this there we go chain monkey very useful tool i like this one a lot sometimes it can be difficult to use and i'll, I'll show you all three ways to set this chain one of the first things that you want to do after you clean everything up and get everything after cleaning your chain up is you want to find the center point between your rear axle and your sprocket. So take your measurement and I've already done this. I'll turn this light on so you can see. Normally I would make this with a white Sharpie or something. I could not find it. So I have it in black and you can see it with the light here. It's a fat little dot that I made, but that is the halfway point between the rear axle and the front sprocket. Now you're supposed to measure your chain at that point. So I've taken my center stand and I've used the ratchet strap just to hold it down because it does kind of get in the way. So at this point, we're gonna take our measuring tape and the book requires it to be between 35 and 45 millimeters. So we'll take our measurement and we're roughly about 30, Oh, 37 millimeters measuring that way. So technically it's actually in spec right now. If it wasn't in spec, then what we would do is obviously loosen up our rear axle nut and then we'd adjust accordingly on both sides. You'd either push it back or bring it in and then you do the exact same thing on the other side and then you take your measurement again and make sure that it's within spec. So now I'll show you with this Motion Pro tool. So again, we'll find our dot there. We'll come all up high as we can on a dirt bike or any other cha chain where you have a lot more slack, or if this um, wasn't in the way, you should be able to most likely touch your swing arm there. So I'll move it up to where it touches the swing arm and then I'll zero it out. You see your measurements here. So then I will hold this, pull it down, and then remove it. And then as you can see, we are right about oh 37 millimeters or so so again this chain is in spec so let's say that this chain was not in spec i'll go ahead and show you what we would do we loosen up our back axle now you don't have to take it all the way off just get it loose And to make the adjustment, so say we had too much slack, which is most of the time gonna be the case after you adjust it, the chain stretches over time. You take your 12 millimeter, you break this free. Give yourself a little bit of looseness there. We'll do the same thing on the other side. You'll break that 12 millimeter free. Then you'll take your 10 millimeter Okay, so let's say that our chain needed to be adjusted. Most of the time your chain's gonna be too loose and you'll need to take some slack out of it. So what we'll do is we'll take our 12 millimeter, we'll break this back nut free, then we'll take our 10 millimeter and then we'll start just tightening this up, moving the chain back to provide more tension on the chain. Once we check our measurement again, and everything is in spec, we will tighten our, we'll hold our 10 millimeter and we'll tighten our 12 millimeter with the 12 millimeter wrench. Again, doing this on both sides, ensuring that the chain is even. Now this bike has little tick marks and you wanna make sure that these tick marks are exact on both sides. So one, you have correct chain wear and also the bike tracks correctly while it's on the road and you don't have excessive tire wear. 
here's a little closer look at these tick marks. You can see that I've got five showing and it's just barely on the sixth tick mark. So again, you wanna make sure that's the same on both sides. Now with the Chain Monkey, what you can do is you can take your back of your package, you measure your chain link, and this chain link is roughly 15 millimeters. So on the back of your package, there's two different categories shown here. And we want to be between the 35 and the 45 millimeter mark. So that being said, that is about one and a half if you look at the scale here. So what we'll do is we'll take, you'll notice on the chain monkey, it's got these numbers back here. And then it has this rubber washer. You want to take your chain monkey and you want to set it where it just barely touch this washer barely touches and then it's about one and a half. So you have one on this side, you've got two on this side and then you can leave that set always for your particular bike. That's where it will be set. And that's the correct chain tension. So what we'll do now is we'll find that midpoint again, right here. We'll hook this, loosen it up, hook it over the chain right there in the middle and now we will tighten this up and now what this is going to do is it's going to create a a bend or a u shape in the chain so instead of sitting here and going back and forth and checking your checking your measurement and then going over here and making your adjustment and checking your measurement and then making your adjustment you can just get the chain in this u shape where it's touching and then make move your adjustment back here and where it's tight and then you're done. So it's kind of a set it, adjust it, and forget about it, you're done. I like this tool, but again, sometimes it can be a little bit particular. If you're not paying attention, you can screw it too far and, and so on. But it is a very excellent tool for quick jobs, making sure that your, your chain is adjusted correctly. I usually do it with both. I'll do it with the slack setter and then I'll go back and check it with the chain monkey or vice versa. I'll grab the chain monkey, do it, and then I'll go back and I'll check my measurement with the slack setter to make sure everything's correct. Just for me, peace of mind that it's done correctly. Again, bo using both of these tools will be faster than sitting here and trying to measure you know, up and down and then making your adjustments over and over again. This table makes it super easy to do all these adjustments because they bring the, the bike up to you instead of laying on the ground and trying to do all that and giving up. Not everybody has a lift table and I understand that, but it does make it easy. Uh, this is a Harbor Freight table. You, sometimes you can find them on Craigslist for like $200. I think I actually picked this one up for like 110. Smoking deal. But get, picking yourself up a table, if you have the room for it in your garage, makes all the difference when it comes to doing the maintenance on the, on the motorcycle. Okay, so I did double check and make sure everything's accurate here. I have the same tick marks on both sides. Now the only thing we need to do now is just torque down our back axle nut. So we'll take our 27 millimeter and our uh, torque wrench and we'll set it to 74 foot pounds or 100 Newton meters. And then we'll torque it down. So let me just say this. If you do have a flat or anything where you need to make adjustments when you're on the trail, it's important that you don't over tighten this back axle nut. And I say that because you have your bearings in your back wheel and if you over tighten that back axle nut where they're really pressing on those bearings and the wheel tries to rotate, you're going to wear out your bearings very fast. So it's important that you don't over tighten. In reality, on the trail, if you have a flat tire and you have to break over that nut and you have to take it off and pull the axle out, it, you're better for it to be a little bit loose than you are over tight. So I would say get it snug but don't really crank on it and get it over tight because the chances of that lock nut coming off, if it's not tight enough, are very slim. But the chances of you burning up your bearings if you over tighten it are about 100%. So I would say go on the side of caution and don't over tighten it rather than just making sure that it's snug, if, if that makes clear. I mean, obviously you don't want it to be loose enough to where it's going to fall off, but I think, I think you get it. So the book says 74 foot pounds or 100 newton meters. So we'll go ahead and set our torque wrench to that right now. Let's 
Okay, so now that we have it tightened in the back, everything torqued down the way it's supposed to be, our chain is clean, our slack is set to where it's supposed to be, now I'm gonna take the bike, put it back on the center stand, and I'll show you how to lube your chain. Okay, so I've got the bike back on the center stand here, and it's in neutral, the wheel spins freely. So when it comes to lubing up your chain, there are several things on the market that you can use. You can use a just a regular aerosol chain lube, you can use a wax, you can use motor oil, <laughs> you could use WD-40, and a lot of manufacturers even suggest you use either like 90 weight gear oil. Um, the problem with the gear oil for me though, is that it slings off really easy and you know, it makes, it would just, it makes a mess. Even though it's a really good lubricant, it does make a mess. Um, I like to use something like this maximum synthetic chain guard. It's uh, goes on clear, doesn't sling off very well. It doesn't sling off very easily. Um, another thing you can use is a wax, but for heavy dirt riding and off-road riding, I don't like to use a wax as much because it does actually collect dirt pretty well and the chain just gets pretty damn nasty. So something like this uh, this chain guard does a really good job. The, the bike's in neutral, back wheel spins very freely. Again, you wanna put some towels down, especially if you're doing this in your driveway, you don't wanna get oil all over. And then from there, it's pretty simple. You just spray and rotate making sure that you're getting both sides of the, the links. And I like to put it on pretty heavy. And then just rotate it around several times and work it in. You can even do it from, you can even do it from underneath but really by the time you get done spraying it around and rotating around, it all just kind of soaks itself all the way through. So that's kind of why I like to go back and forth and then just do it pretty liberally. Now, once you get that done, you can, you can leave it on and just let it go or you can take a rag, wipe any excess off that's there dripping. I honestly just let it soak and let it drip all the way through. That way I know it gets all the way through the links. Anything that doesn't get absorbed just drips onto my towel or on my bench here and we're done and I'll clean up the mess afterwards. All right guys, that's pretty much it. I showed you how to adjust the chain, showed you how to clean it, showed you how to lubricate it, and there really isn't much more to it besides that. This is a pretty in-depth process from what I showed you. Normally it doesn't take this long. I mean, we're talking normally, you know, 10, 15 minutes at most. And again, make sure you follow your recommended specifications uh, for your measurements on the chain as well as your, your intervals for adjustment. If you let it go too long, you'll just be wearing out your sprockets. You'll be wearing out your chain quicker than what needs be. So if you have any questions about this process or any of the tools that I use in this video, I'll leave links to the tools down below in the description. But yeah, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Let me know. I love talking to you guys and answering your questions. And uh, again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do so. Uh, make sure and smash that uh, bell icon. That way you know when the new videos are released. I'm releasing videos every Monday and Thursday. Speaking of that, please join me on Thursdays for gear and beer. And uh, hopefully next Monday, I'll be releasing a ride video because when this video is actually released today, Monday, I'm actually in Southern Oregon right now doing a ride in the, in the Alvord Desert. So having a blast there, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I'll have plenty of footage to release for you next Monday when this next video comes out. So yeah, appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.